Hey there, and welcome to episode number 27 of season two of the World of Presentations podcast brought to you by us at presentation agency 356 Apps. I'm Boris, your host today and the founder of the company. And today we are talking to a very special guest whose name is Tony Harmer about many things, right? Tony, we are going to talk about many things, but all of yeah. them are related to design and to presentation design and teaching the topic of design. Tony, um, how can I say it? Welcome to the podcast. I'm super happy to talk to you. Oh, thank you, Boris. I'm super happy to talk to you. Thanks ever so much for having me along. It's fantastic. Yeah, it, it, it took us a little bit. It took us a while yes. to kind of <laughs> figure that out <laughs> and kind of plan it. But here we have it. Now, yes. Tony, let's start with a little bit of information about yourself. Because yep. from what I have seen, from what I know, there is there are just quite a lot of things that you can mention about yourself. Like, tell us a little bit about like your background. Okay, well, we'll try and keep it, because you're on a podcast, we'll try and keep it to less than a day, <laughs> this particular sure. bit. So, uh, I'm Tony Harmer. I am uh, an author on LinkedIn Learning, formerly lynda.com, although the two are still running in parallel at the moment. Uh, I am also uh, a former Adobe Specialist Solutions Consultant. So, I worked on lots of things for Adobe. Um, I was a contractor for Adobe for a number of years before joining uh, on staff. Uh, but for uh, 30, wow, man, I'm just trying to think. It's like crazy. It's like 35 years or something. I've been an illustrator and designer. I started in a, in a print shop uh, as a printer. So I learned, uh, I used to run a single color offset. I didn't graduate to the four color machines. Uh, the most I'd do would be two, um, but I was a printer. Then I spent more and more time in the paste-up studio because, of course, this was in the days before computers where everything was stuck together and, uh, and cut uh, a lot, and you inhaled tons and tons of atmospheric glue, which, of course, is terrible. But um, And, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I've done a few others. I've taught for a quite a while as well. I taught. I'm a qualified teacher. Um, I've done that. I've done some other jobs on the side because anybody who works in design freelance will tell you that it's feast or famine. Sometimes you've got tons of work. Sometimes you've got no work, but the bills, they keep on are coming. So yeah. uh, you do other jobs as well. But that actually, I find that I think it's an enriching thing. I don't regret any of that. Um, I worked through the whole system. I worked for the Royal Society for Nature Conservation to start off with. Uh, and then went through, uh, I went into concept development um, with a toy and movie company, movie and television company. So I was concept artist for them for a while. And then uh, creative director at, at a design and marketing agency. Then bizarrely, I had a three year break when I went into the military. Uh, I actually come from a military family. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, and I resisted it uh, when I was when I was young, but then did that for three years. Uh, and then the army found out I could design stuff and draw stuff. And so they utilized my ability to do that towards the end, uh, which was fun. And then went, yeah, then went back and picked it all up from there. So that is pretty much my life story in a nutshell. <laughs> wow. I didn't know about the army thing. That is for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So you, I found what you are doing. It's actually very hard for somebody who is involved in design or in presentation design as we are to not get to something that you have created, especially on LinkedIn. Uh, you are a LinkedIn instructor, LinkedIn learning instructor. As you said, Linda was purchased by LinkedIn. Some of the mm -hmm. courses mig were migrated right to LinkedIn That's learning it. and you also have like you have so many courses on the adobe products you also have course i believe it's just one correct me if i'm wrong but it's one on presentation design specifically I do, right? yeah. yeah 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 and more or less what we just talked before we hit the record button you have and for everyone to hear that loud like hear that hear me clearly tony has 39 that's it published okay. courses for linkedin learning not one, yeah. not two, not three, <laughs> 39. And how many in production? 
Like what, what's uh, happening? There are seven in production at the moment, which means they will uh, they will hit around about March next year because they take a little while because uh, they have to go through a whole process of different yeah. things for internationalization, various different and compression, all of that stuff. Yeah, uh, there's so, a team of I think sixteen editors that work on my stuff yeah. when it leaves here. So, so forty six courses here and there, nothing special, you know, guys. Yeah. So, <laughs> forty six <laughs> courses and a weekly series and a weekly and series a and a weekly series. Yeah, design tools weekly. Yeah, and a weekly series. <laughs> like, how do you become a LinkedIn learning instructor? Like, what does it take? to become one of those people because you are like the people who are teaching on LinkedIn learning are not that many, right? So how did yeah. you become a LinkedIn learning instructor? What does it take for somebody who is imagining at some point in the future, who wants to be one of those people? Like what, yeah. what would you advise here? Uh, well, they need to know their subject matter. That's the, the most important thing, right? They need to really, really know what they're talking about. Um, and uh, they need to be able to break it down into, they need to be able to teach basically, but in, they need to be able to teach in a way that is not just instructive to a certain degree, it has to be entertaining because otherwise, you know, if it's dry and monotonous, people aren't going to watch it. You know, they're not going to complete the course. Uh, so if they can do those things, anybody can apply to be a LinkedIn learning instructor and put together uh, a reel um, of their stuff and submit that at the bottom of the LinkedIn learning page. There's a should be a, a link um, to become an instructor, and that goes to their. I think it's a monthly review panel mm. that look, and then if they like uh, what they see and hear, they will talk to you more about what they would ask you for suggestions of what you were doing. So that's kind of how it works for most people. Some people do get selected um, from outside of that. My personal route was when uh, James Fritz, who's I think the VP of content now um, there for creative. Uh, I can't exactly remember James because James is a mate. So I don't really you know these days. So I don't remember his job title too, too readily. Um, but James saw me speak at a conference in Washington in uh, 2010, uh, where, which was fortunate enough to receive a standing ovation, not once, but also again on the second day when it was mentioned in general conference, which was kind of crazy nuts. Wow. That, um, I took it, it was a present and it was my presentation. That was the thing. It wasn't so much what I was talking about. It was my presentation that was the and i took a crazy crazy risk uh flying out um so i flew up from heathrow to uh washington to dallas uh and then on to on to washington and when i got on the plane i was reviewing my presentation uh it was quite lucky actually because i've been bumped up to first class so i had a really nice cot and and you know all of the Grolsch I could drink at the time, because I used to drink back then. Um, I don't anymore. The, uh, um, and my presentations are better, I think, as a result. But I, I just made, I just looked at my presentation and thought, this is crap. It's just crap. It's graphs and it's pictures of meaningless drivel. I'm going to put everybody to sleep, mm. you know? And uh, it was what was called an Ignite presentation. So you have, 29 slides i think and one minute to deliver your presentation it's competition essentially and uh on the plane i thought how could i how could i make this rather dry topic which is about why there weren't forms why there should be forms in, in uh, forms controls inside of indesign uh, adobe's page layout software and uh and it suddenly dawned on me uh I should turn it into a poem. <laughs> okay. So I turned it into a 14 stanza uh, poem in iambic pentameter. And uh, yeah, and just redid my slides, made them funny, 
they also they contained hardly any of the content I was talking about, and this is one of the things that I talk about in my uh, in my course on LinkedIn Learning is one of the one of the big arguments in presentation is there's always a temptation. You think that by adding bullet points that you're in some way reinforcing what you're saying, but what you're actually doing is you're forcing your audience into a choice, right? And the choice is that there's two choices. They can read the slide or they can listen to you. Mm. Yeah. So I most of my slides were completely devoid of text unless it was funny and very, very brief. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, they were all just there to add a humorous image to this thing that I was delivering. And uh, InDesign Secrets, I think, still have the poem on their website. It's still there. Um, and that made you a LinkedIn <laughs> learning instructor? Uh, well, it, it kind of did because the whole, you know, I turned around to give my uh, Lavellia microphone back to Anne-Marie Concepcion, who was on the desk, on the mixing desk. And she said, because I could hear everybody clapping and cheering. And, you know, I thought, oh, well, that's gone down really well. She said to me, uh, you should turn around. And I did turn around and that entire place was on its feet and they were going absolutely nuts. Oh, wow. And the following day, it got, presentation. just because of a, well, it's a powerful thing, if you do it properly, yeah. you know, and you shouldn't, people, some people just look at a presentation as, oh, I've got to put a deck together for this. But it's, it's more than that. It's your own. You should approach it in the same way as making a live te television program. Mm. Because you have got the, un if you do it right, you've got that undivided attention through to your audience there. And if you include enough limbic material that really hits it in the sort of middle brain there, yeah, they are going to be hooked and they will listen. You know, so it's it, when people say, oh, I've got to put a deck together for this. They're not they're already not invested. You know, yep. if I hear people talk like that, I think, well, why are you even here? You know, this is if you're in sales and you're you know, you're giving a presentation to convince a customer why they should be buying from you. If you're at the point, if you before you've even set out, before you've even got into the room if you've sat there and just thought oh god i hate doing slide decks you've lost already yeah. or you, at, at the very least you're not maximizing what you might be able to do you've given up before you've even started and i, I do think that's uh that's a real problem because that, and and you know if if you if your strong point isn't making decks then make it your strong point <laughs> learn if it's the key to you doing your job, learn, you know, make an investment in what you're doing and at least commit to it. Don't just go through the motions of doing it and think, oh, well, it's all right. You know, even in a situation where the, the purchaser may actually really need, may need what you've got, that doesn't mean you can't grow what you've got. And it also, it, you should, you, you have a chance there to develop a relationship. If some of you comes through in that, you form a bond that means that when you come back for renewal or when you come back to show a new product or a new service, they're going to think of you fondly because you you crafted something for them. You know, that's that's how I see it. Yeah, there is. There was. I was just being silent here because there was such so much wisdom in what you said. Hopefully, our audience is business professionals and business people, and also creative people. Hopefully, a lot of people because we haven't. The truth is that we haven't rehearsed that one, and there is just so much. I cannot agree with everything that you said. How much opportunities are being missed just because people don't spend enough time on their presentations and how they prepare for those presentations. It is mind boggling. I mean, it is, yeah. it is incredible. It is truly, mm -hmm. truly incredible. And same for conferences. You also, 
you speak at a lot of events, a lot of conferences. Uh, tell us a little bit about that experience because being a teacher, being a trainer is one thing. Being a great speaker, receiving standing ovation for a one minute presentation is obviously another thing. Like, what do you believe? <laughs> what do you believe makes somebody a great speaker, a great public speaker, a great conference speaker. Let's be a bit more specific because you are speaking at a lot of events, obviously. Yeah. I mean, also, I'll just quickly answer your question, uh, for your first question, by the way, first, in that James Fritz saw that and James Fritz said that I should, um, I should contact him at some point in the future because they'd be interested in talking to me about being an instructor. So, but in terms of speaking at events and delivering i think it boils down to two things again one of them is uh knowing and well maybe two things knowing your subject secondly caring about your subject yeah and thirdly and perhaps most importantly honoring and caring about the fact that you have the most precious gift anybody can give you and that is their time if somebody is giving you their time to watch you talk about something, you owe it to them, yeah, to share your passion for what you do. You know, you, that's the thing. Now, I think that's what makes all the speakers I've seen that have left me, you know, sitting there thinking, wow, you know, just wow, I love, you know, they've been the people who have really poured their passion into what they talk about you know they've not delivered it in a sort of i'm wandering around a red dot in a ted talk kind of way you know and just trying to use there's a few buzz phrases if you watch enough ted talks right you'll know there's in, there's a few little buzz phrases that people in there use sometimes and 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 it, it gets a bit cringy after a little while when you know people use those particular buzz phrases one of i can't get one of them to mind actually funny enough at the minute but one will pop into my head in a bit. Yeah, if you deliver something that says, uh, you know, I really care about this, this is why you should care about it as well. Yeah, that's what makes a great speaker, I think. And great visuals and not, not endless tables of stuff. And it's unfortunately, it's marketers that sometimes are guilty of that stuff. This is a problem for people, of course, in business and, and, and commercial stuff when they get they've got someone who's been chosen to speak at a conference and marketing takes over the job of producing the slides and uh marketing I, I, i've got lots of marketing people are terrible for my content because they think oh no there's there's only four words on that slide you know, that's a, that's a look at all those gaps. We could stick some graphs in there and you end up with something that looks like a nightmare dashboard. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, um, you but can no, see that great very speakers. often. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's, well, I've seen, you know, people make what they make and that, that is entirely up to them. But it, just, it makes me a little bit sad sometimes that, mm. that I just think if you just thought a little bit more about that then and you might have a great speaker who is actually let down by the fact that they've got terrible terrible <laughs> terrible terrible slides but no that's what makes it i think knowing what you knowing what you're talking about caring about it and caring enough about the people that have given you their time and that's that's what i would say those three things yeah and i recently heard some it probably was somebody like these very popular business names. I think it was Seth Godin or somebody mm. that popular that mm. he was talking. I, I believe it was him, but I'm not sure. I believe it was him and he was talking about presentations or public speaking, etc. And he was talking about every exactly what you said that, hey, care, care enough. But when people say care enough, what he added is that caring enough is a choice right? It's a yeah. choice. And that mm. these two words, that addition to care enough and that the fact that it's a choice, you choose to care enough, no? Mm. Because many people, are, well, I'm not passionate about a topic, right? Mm. Make yourself passionate. It's a choice. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, wholeheartedly. It's, um, you know, you don't, uh, you, you don't do things, you, you don't, do you know the term freewheeling? So it's when you're, that's for when you're on a bicycle and you hit a hill and you, you know, you don't have to pedal to do anything. Um, there are a lot of people who freewheel through things, you know, and uh, I just think it's disrespectful. Maybe it's, I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of old school really in that I just think it's disrespectful to do that. And if I've, if somebody's given me a job to do, I want to do that job, you know. Somebody's trusted me with their staff to, to talk about it. And, you know, I want to do that job. I mean, I did the, what, the thing that actually spawned the presentation course um, and I can't talk about the specifics of it and the, the customers involved uh, exactly, but um, but but it was it was uh, based on some people at LinkedIn who knew that I turned in a presentation that made uh, made a lot of money, you know, like tens of millions of dollars, and um, not for me, sadly, <laughs> but you know, I know but. <laughs> well you know but I mean I was glad that I bought the thing in uh, for them and that was that was that was a customer that uh, it was something I was helping to support a sales effort on and the customer had said the customer spent I think at that particular time something in the region of about 20 million dollars and wow um and you know as most most sort of corporations certainly in software and and, and subscription based things they want to they want to upsell all the time wherever possible get some growth in there to, to as much as they can perfectly reasonable that's what business exists for um and uh the initial meeting with that customer was not good in that they had their procurement people there that's another thing that's a disconnect because you're not dealing with the customer directly while the customer may, may well be in the room they're not the, the, the people that are, are steering the thing along right they uh, the procurement people basically said yeah we think we've had a look at the estate uh as it sits at the moment and we think we're actually spending too much so we'd like to reduce that by i think i think it was about five million dollars and that that's of course not good so that <laughs> that'd be like negative growth on there and um and uh, the people i was working with on it they said uh Oh, I don't know how we're going to get around this and whatever. I said, do you know what? I'd like to try something a little bit different. You know, we went away from it. We didn't, I didn't think of this on the spot. I thought about it for days and days and days. And when we next convened, I went to them and said, um, do you know what? I've got an idea here because the way that these things are typically presented is you get a few slides that talks to you about the company with a, you know, most global software companies people recognize the names of them you know and uh it's i think that's insulting to show that to some people and they've got then they've got yardage you know it's like they're actually pulling graphs out just to make sure that they've got enough graphs in the you know in the things now yeah. there are some things that have to exist with these things so when you're pitching uh things like software you there are tables that have to exist at the end of but that should be the bit where you've stopped actually presenting and then you're kind of setting the scene for negotiation and you go through that content you don't keep changing it you go through that content and setting aside if there is something like that in a presentation setting aside time to sort of go through that is 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 perfectly fair game uh, but anyway, I said, I, I want to do this. I want to do this differently. And I mean, like, really, really differently. And um, and they said, well, as, where we're concerned, as far as where we're concerned, you know, it's not looking good. So if you think it will work, try it. And the, the idea was, is that at no point in any of the other things I've been involved in like this were the customer being told a story. And I thought that was important. I thought what they actually need to see here is a story of where they are now and show them the diff show them the diff visually show them the difference of where they could be heading and then use um and i had a great 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 friend of mine mark who 
uh, said to me, because I decided to use a core sample of 100 people, yeah, and say, if 100 of your people do this, it will save you this much money and so on. Mm. Right? You'll make this much money back. And Mark said, why 100? I said, well, you know, it's just a nice, easy, and it's almost like a percentile thing. You could do it that way. He said, use one. Use one person if it's if it you know because we talked about the numbers he was he was part of the part of the team but we we didn't he didn't work on the actual pitch he just worked on a peripheral role and um, he said use one person and I thought you know what that is actually even more compelling because when you added these things up and so we did it with one one person so I had a little graphic of like a hundred people and then one of them um, the others all turned red and faded away. So there was just one person. If one person does this in your organization and they do this this many times a day, because we knew based on these numbers, uh, some customers share the rates they pay people for that, some don't. And But there are web tools you can use to get that information. So you've got some sort of base calculation. And yeah, we did that. And in all the thing, there was no there was no visible transition between the slides. It was as if they were watching it on a continuous roll. You know, like the end credits of a film. Yep, of course. Yeah. But they were graphic and they had stopwatches and they had um, small icon based things that just slowly went on behind and you could see there was a progression almost as if the thing was coming into play. And I'm a big fan of doing that because I think it's, and especially when you, when the direction of travel changes. So if you've got something, it's almost like going down a drain pipe and around a drain pipe. When you've got a presentation, you think, oh, this is scrolling vertically. And then you go, what? It's suddenly scrolling horizontally. What is this guy doing? You know, <laughs> it's just, but it worked. And, um, and uh, they came back and they, well, let's just say, right, it more than doubles the estate there they were very 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 happy with that and it you also, also started the, i was very happy um i got uh i got a fairly decent amount of compensation for that i've got to say it, it was pretty good and um and, and people who who knew the customer they um yeah they talked about it you know and 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 that's why when linkedin wanted somebody to do something on presentations my producer susan who is incredible um uh she said tony's done a few things that have been really transformative for for a few customers um he likes taking intelligent risks and sometimes he just likes taking risks <laughs> but you know uh, and they asked me they asked me about it and i i put it put a thing together and uh, yeah it's been quite successful that course it's 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 good and it's yeah. brief as well, right? So yep. again, because it was essentially one big long presentation, yeah. 30 minutes, I think, round about that, I think it might be just top side of 30 minutes. Um, certainly under an hour anyway, you know, yeah. and I just figure you can you can watch a TV program for an hour. Yeah, sort of a serialized television programs around about an hour. Or if you're in the business presentations, you could spend some time watching that. And up your game. <laughs> yeah, you know back that's... to your back to your idea at the beginning. Hey, <laughs> you're spending yeah. one hour on an episode on Netflix, and you your work on a daily basis it is dependent on you presenting in front of people, and yeah. you're not spending that one hour to figure out how to use the tools well, right? Yeah. Or how to yeah. apply basic principles of design. Tony, by the way, I'm not a designer. I have a team yeah. of designers. But I really, cool. I have an eye for it, as people like to say. Yeah. And I'm very, huh, sometimes it gets frustrating for our designers because I see something that's misaligned from afar. Yeah. Like, it is right. just scary, you know? It's scary to watch me giving feedback <laughs> sometimes. This is misaligned. And they're like, no, it's not. And I'm like, no, it is. And they're like, no, it's yeah. not. Let me show you. And I'm like, show me. And when they show yeah. me, it's one pixel on the left. And I'm like, I told you. And they're like, <laughs> getting, frustrated. <laughs> and getting frustrated. I don't know where I got that one, but I don't, really don't, also don't care. Design is just so important. And the fact that you also mentioned that a presentation can close, and that is like a presentation can close a 20 million US dollar contract. 
and mm-hmm. it all the whole deal is just based on that like that one hour with the customer where you are in front of them and just the presentation that you have prepared and the presentation that you are delivering and the way it looks also is just that one thing that will make make it or break it right that will be the case so let's see Tony, are you there if you can hear me oh i can see you yeah, now. i can hear you i can hear ah, let's stop perfect. the cameras if you want for now do you want to stop okay. the cameras for a sec so you already shared quite some things in regards to what people do wrong or where are they doing mistakes when they're preparing for an important presentation like yeah if you if we have to if or if i have to ask you that question hey what are the top mistakes top three mistakes that you see people doing with their presentations be that in the business world or the conference world what would you say they do like what do you see in the business world that people just plain and simple are not doing right and that's causing them business obviously a lot of information that is one thing that you mentioned anything else that's on top of your head uh so i I can actually give you um my top three i guess would be uh first one the number one culprit i'll do i'll do them in descending order uh, because the number one culprit is what i believe um gar reynolds uh, a bit of a presentation guru what gar reynolds calls slideguments so they're things that should be a document um but actually uh, they're being presented as a slide so they're covered in text and graphics and by graphics i mean graphs and you know they're unintelligible they require um lots of further investigation before you look at them so that's the number one uh thing yeah number two is uh poor choices of color i think Hmm. not considering color and design overall um you know because color has a language all of its own um for many of us irrespective of what culture uh, we come from, you know, or uh, or that kind of thing, you know, colour means something. And it's, I quite often see people have just picked a colour that they like and have decided to use that, it, despite the fact it has nothing to do with, with what you're talking about or who you're talking to. Uh, so colour and colour and, uh, des- I'm going to loop colour in and design in, but colour is the most evident thing. Um, okay. And maybe... So there's so many i mean I could, I could branch into other areas of design as well really inconsistent typography that but then again i'm a designer so that really irritates me when people have uh you know visual inconsistencies in the words that they do put on screen and they're not doing it for dramatic effect they're just doing it because they put in a bullet point um as an afterthought and they probably shared the deck with, or they're getting the deck from somebody else and they've just typed it and it's coming in their system default font. And so you've got maybe, maybe three lines because you shouldn't have any more than three, but maybe you've got three lines that are set in 24 point, I don't know, Arial or Calibri, whatever. Um, and this, then there's this, this, one of them has been changed and that one is in 18 point Helvetica that that really annoys me <laughs> that yeah. does actually annoy me it doesn't i don't think oh dear your deck looks really bad i think you really don't care and that does annoy me especially if i've been sat there watching it <laughs> yeah so those and are the top are, three i think yeah and if you think about it as you said these are some of them like especially the typography is so easy to fix to make sure that yeah. everything is consistent it's yeah. like it's scary to watch. Like, Tony, by the way, yeah. what are you using for presentations? Are you an Apple Keynote fan or a PowerPoint fan? I, I am most definitely a Keynote fan. Apple Keynote. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Keynote. Yeah, I mean, I do use I do use PowerPoint when I have to. Um, and Keynote these days, ever since uh, the um, the the uh, advent of three six five, because uh, uh, some some features in in PowerPoint um, are only available to people who've got the, the subscription. Some of those features are really, really good. Um, 
but I find that Apple Keynote works best for me for my workflow. So I, I build a lot of graphics in Illustrator, uh, Adobe Illustrator. And the fact that I can take those graphics, just cut them or copy them to the clipboard, paste them directly in Keynote and they're preserved in the PDF architecture. They're not changed to, uh, which means they, they can preserve the vectors. Um, means if I want to change the scale of things, that becomes less of a problem. Um, yeah, it suits my workflow, but I mean, people use whatever they use. I mean, there's, there's, as you've probably seen, the world of presentation software is quite large, you know, there's so many different services you can use as Google Sheets, which is fairly obvious. Um, there are lots and lots of other things. Yeah, lots. Google Google is obviously trying to do something about it with Google Slides, right? But yeah. I don't know whether or not you have used it, but the only thing, there are two things that make Google Slides way better than both PowerPoint and, and Apple Keynote, at least in my opinion. The first one is the collaboration. It's insane. Yeah. The collab yeah. is crazy. And the versioning. I don't know if you have yeah. tested it, but the versioning is mind-blowing I, I haven't i mean i am aware uh, aware of, 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 what, of what they offer but i haven't used it the only time i ever used google sheets uh with any regularity would have been um uh, for a couple of years i was head of training and designing curriculum for a company in london um a training company uh they were adobe and autodesk uh, certified trainer, certified training company, and uh, I had. Uh, I always think it's a good idea to lead by example. So, I had my takeaway decks stored on on Google on Google Slides, uh, so that people could access them afterwards. And I asked all the other instructors to do the same if they were producing a presentation. It didn't mean you had to strip it down a little bit, of course, but it wasn't really being used as a presentation, it was being used as a, as a sort of a slide based reference, which is a slightly different thing, slightly different rules for that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And obviously, we can talk a lot about design and a lot about obviously presentation design, because you are very passionate about that topic too. I do love that topic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and very niche if you if you think about it, right? Not that many it people is. do it. Not that many people do it yet. As you said already, $20 million deal. Why? Because of the because of the presentation, and yeah. I really understand what you mean when I say. Unfortunately, I didn't got those money for myself. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> I really understand that we also had these cases yeah. where we our projects won investments from huge companies and also did an IPO, which got in Bulgaria. You can imagine the Bulgarian market mm -hmm. compared to almost any other European, of course, market got yeah. 42 million euro. Wow. And that was, cool. that became the second largest IPO in our country back then, like two years ago, we didn't got those money. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> but it, it told, you know what people say, right? I learned a lot, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> I learned yeah, a lot. That's the thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, yeah. where can people find more about you? You're obviously, for sure, we need to point them to the incredible amount of resources on LinkedIn Learning. If everyone is having the premium subscription or doesn't have a premium subscription to access LinkedIn Learning and get to Tony's courses, 39 courses, seven in the making, guys, don't wait more. Like, go check them out. They're on various topics, but where can people find more about you? How do, how do you advise people to reach out and connect with you? What are the best places? Uh, so, well, I mean, LinkedIn, of course, is the primary way. Uh, in addition to that, I have, um, uh, so I have a nick, my nickname is the Design Ninja, TDN, uh, mm -hmm. as, as people say these days, trying to say less words with, with just a few letters. Um, and I have a YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash the Design Ninja. Um, and that's really where I talk about, uh, I do um, tips and techniques for uh, Adobe design software. Uh, so Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, occasionally XD and occasionally Acrobat, which is another thing that designers, off, you know, designers who subscribe to Creative Cloud 
they get acrobat as part of it but you know they mm. they they don't use it um i don't realize the power that it has that the things that they can do with it so which is a shame so i do that occasionally um the other places to connect to me are uh, i guess on instagram really and twitter uh, at tony harmer um there's also this one's got a lot of underscores in it it's got um at the underscore design underscore ninja underscore tm because it's a trademark as well so um yeah so those are the best places to connect with me but linkedin and and also you don't need a subscription to view uh if you don't want to buy into a subscription for linkedin learning some of my courses um are available off the shelf so you can buy them for a one-off fee and that gives you access to the library to just watch that course so you can watch it as many times as you want do you know um, that linkedin learning are doing that since when mm, I, I, they've been doing it for a couple of years I'm, i'm just thinking now i should be in all regions i don't i don't think it's so because sometimes when they do things like that they roll it out in a couple of regions first i mean they roll it out in the us typically first um and then yes. They come out into the UK, Australia, um, and then 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 uh, South America and rest of Europe, all of those afterwards. But I'm pretty sure. Um, and so I've got a meeting with my content manager tomorrow. Actually, I'll ask her this question, which, which is no good to you right now. But if you go there uh, without being signed into LinkedIn, you should be able to see that the courses are available. Um, Interesting. And they're quite quite well priced as well. I think. Uh, introduction to graphic design which is uh, the number one course on LinkedIn for creative so it's it's the top course it's the most viewed most purchased most everything um, on LinkedIn it's used by a lot of American design schools I think that's only about 30 pounds I think to own that and for something that is um, I think it's about four hours long that you know yeah um that's not that's not bad <laughs> for four that's hours pretty decent price i mean <laughs> yeah i mean check in your own region but it should be around about that it might even be less than that i mean i've noticed that some of mine are, are as low as 20 pounds you know which is just just great you know so uh, so if you don't want to get into a subscription then then that's how you can do it interesting we'll make sure that we link everything in the show notes and in the blog Thank post you. that will follow up with your episode it's only one last question which is obviously unusual but i sure. warned you about that let's see whether or not you're ready yeah. if not okay <laughs> we'll we'll discuss it afterwards we okay. try to invite people like you at this podcast to tr just share wisdom from their life experience with design presentations public speaking etc you know mm. a lot of people obviously you have seen a lot of people you have presented a lot of people in front of a lot of people and you know hopefully a lot of people that also care at least as much as you for the way they present who is that person that we need to invite next like do you have somebody in oh, your mind goodness. in your head that you are like mm, this person really cares about presentation so i think he will be a good fit yeah i'm just um it's a hard question it's a really hard question because i know some really i do know some really great people All right. I also know some really great people who aren't that great at presentations. Though, so, okay. You know, but I know some great people and some great speakers. Um, I kind of it's it's diff difficult for me not to not to escape here from from falling into a, a thing where, where it's basically just one of my friends. So I'll tell you who I really like and whose presentations are great. A little bit sweary sometimes. Okay. Um, But with where he's coming from, I would talk to Radim Malinik. I love watching Radim's presentations. They're funny. They're beautifully designed. And Radim is the author of uh, four books, uh, two, two of which are Amazon bestsellers. Um, so he's, he's, got, uh, he's got a new one out at the moment, which is, which is about creative mindfulness. But he's done a uh, book of ideas. Uh, volume one and volume two, um, and also the book of branding. He used to work at some of the, the, and still does have some involvement with some of the biggest ad and design agencies. All right. Um, 
I was from the Czech Republic originally. Okay. Um, but he lives here in uh, in um, South London. But yeah, I love his presentations. So again, the name? Can... Radim Malinik. And you can find him on Twitter and Instagram at Brand New. So B-R-A-N-D-N-U. Interesting, hash, interesting no, profile name. By the way, I also yeah. wrote down some of his books so that I can track him down because I haven't heard that name. And obviously, it's my problem that I haven't. So <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely check that person and see how we can bring him in. Yeah, Let's... no, he's great. Yeah, perfect. Very Tony, fun I like it's almost an hour. Just to give you context, yeah. it's That's almost so an hour. Thank you so much for spending the time. It was super nice to have you. You shared a lot Thank of you. interesting things without us even planning or rehearsing that. I hope that people will take a lot of the things that you said and at least think about it, right? Yeah, Start from that, there. that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Start caring. That's the main thing. Mm. I think. Start so, yeah. caring. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much for doing this. I hope that we can... No worries, Boris. Once again, at some point, when you have 57 courses, maybe? When, uh... Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, well, I'm, gonna, I'm working towards it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are obviously moving in that direction very, very soon. So yeah, man. <laughs> I think that you will get to those courses at least to 50 very soon. At least. Yes, that's I, like. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. Again, thanks for doing this. Everyone, We you can find everything that Tony shared and all of the channels, all of the links in the show notes or in the blog post that's accompanying this episode. And for everyone who wants to know more about what we do, it's 356labs.com. Take a look at what we are doing. Obviously, the conference that we are organizing, I don't know if Tony knows about it. It's called Present to Succeed. Oh, Tony, cool. probably we need to have you for 2022 because the speaker lineup is now um, filled in. But I'll be super happy to have you for the next edition, for the second edition and plan your participation to share some di design technique tips and tricks for presentation design in 2022. What are you saying love to, to that idea you. right now? No, I would love to join you. I really would. Now that we would have be it. fantastic. You are yep. going to be the first speaker, the, spe the first announced speaker for 2022. That's official now. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> so that is, <laughs> that is something that we are going to announce in April the 17th, everyone who has tickets already, the ticket prices are actually starting at 49 euros only. We have some of the brightest minds in the presentation industry. So if you don't know anything about the conference yet, check it out. Tony, again, again thanks and see how... <laughs> Tony, again, thanks for doing this. And to everyone who listened to this one, I hope you liked it. See you in the next one.